that there are technologies at the South Pole Station that people can't even consider that exist on this planet. In the hidden corners of our world, beneath layers of secrecy and shadow, lies a colossal force, a weapon so immense it possesses the power to unleash earthquakes on demand. But what drives the creation of such a monstrous device? Who possesses the audacity to wield it and for what purpose? And most importantly, are we on the brink of a seismic catastrophe that could reshape our world as we know it? Join us as we unveil the world's largest weapon, a creation so immense it defies belief and sparks a torrent of questions. Eric Hecker exposes Antarctica's hidden space program. Dr. Stephen M. Greer, a renowned figure in the world of UFO or UAP research and founder of the Disclosure Project, recently led a groundbreaking initiative. On June 12, 2023, at the prestigious National Press Club in Washington, D.C., he unveiled compelling evidence that sheds light on covert and unauthorized black budget projects associated with UFO or UAP operations. What makes this event especially remarkable is that Dr. Greer, a volunteer advocate for the Disclosure Project for over 33 years, hasn't conducted such a high-profile presentation in over two decades. The last time he convened an event of this magnitude was on May 9, 2001, when 22 individuals from various government sectors participated. During this recent three-hour-long event, Dr. Greer shared the results of his extensive investigations into these secret programs. Moreover, he was joined by six courageous whistleblowers, individuals with insider knowledge who were willing to step forward and disclose crucial information about these covert operations. One of the standout revelations came from Eric Hecker, a former contractor with Raytheon Technologies Corporation. Hecker's unique experience involved spending a year at the South Pole, providing him with unparalleled access to advanced technology and, more importantly, startling insights. His testimony uncovered the existence of a secret space program being conducted right in Antarctica, a revelation that has left the world in awe. Raytheon Technologies Corporation, headquartered in Arlington, Virginia, is a major player in the aerospace and defense industry. It ranks among the largest aerospace and defense manufacturers globally, both in terms of revenue and market capitalization. The company is also a key provider of intelligence services. Hecker, a tradesman and firefighter, has a unique story that unfolds at the frosty South Pole Station. He's not your ordinary worker, though. He's here to unravel some intriguing technology lurking beneath the icy surface. The Ice Cube Neutrino Detector. This isn't your run-of-the-mill gadget. It's like a secret agent with more tricks up its sleeve than meets the eye. In 2010, he was hand-picked to venture down to the chilly South Pole Station in Antarctica. He spent a whole year in this frozen land, thanks to the folks at Raytheon Polar Services and the National Science Foundation. But what's the big deal about this detector? Well, it's got these things called Digital Optical Modules, or DOMs, nestled in the ice, a whopping 5,160 of them. And get this, each of these DOMs can emit powerful signals at 2047 volts. Now here's where things get real sci-fi. It seems like this neutrino detector isn't just eavesdropping on particles, it's got some secret abilities. Hecker suggests that it might be more than just a science experiment. It could be a sort of energy weapon or a super cool communication hub. It's like a gigantic radio tower in the ice that talks to spaceships cruising not just in our backyard, but even beyond our solar system. Yep, that means talking to aliens. Hecker even chatted with Dr. Michelle Sala about this wild discovery. He dropped some bombshells, like how each dom could be like the biggest radio transmitter in the world, sending out messages like a boss. This led him to think about those fancy ideas Dr. Greer talks about, those faster-than-light ships and laser beams. It's like the stuff of sci-fi dreams. You might wonder, what about regular old radio waves? Well, Hecker has an answer for that, too. He suggests that this ice cube leans more towards something called quantum communication, that's like communication that's super fast and super secret, thanks to the magic of quantum physics. 
But wait, this isn't just some wild theory. He has got the goods. He's got all the proof, the documents, the data. He's not out here to just make waves. He wants to show the world what's really happening beneath the ice. He's been there, seen it with his own eyes. And he's on a mission to make sure everyone knows that there's something amazing going on. Earthquake generating device and elf system. As Hecker continued sharing his experiences, he unveiled some truly eyebrow-raising secrets about the South Pole Station. Picture this. He claimed that while he was stationed there from 2010 to 2011, something unusual happened when they fired up the Ice Cube Neutrino Detector. It caused the ground to shake, like earthquake-style shaking. A machine that's supposed to detect tiny particles made the whole place rumble. But wait, there's more intrigue. He dropped a bombshell about the station housing something called an ELF system, which stands for extremely low frequency. At first, everyone thought it was about as useful as a broken toaster. But Hecker, the curious engineer that he is, decided to take a closer look. Lo and behold, it wasn't just lying there collecting dust. It was fully operational. Now here's where it gets even juicier. He didn't stop at revealing this shocking discovery. He went on to suggest, that this elf system, along with some other mysterious gizmos, might be up to some shady business. Yep, you heard it from the man himself. Nefarious purposes. The South Pole Station in Antarctica is more than a research outpost. It's a secret space traffic control hub, managing both earthly and extraterrestrial aircraft. But it goes beyond traffic control. According to Hecker, it is at the forefront of faster-than-light communication. Imagine sending messages faster than a speeding spaceship as science fiction brought to life. Gary McKinnon, a hacker, discovered a NASA secret, a fleet of off-world ships. If we have ships navigating the universe at incredible speeds, we need messages to keep up. The South Pole Station serves as the switchboard for these super speedy space conversations, a vital link in the interstellar communications network. Secondary long-range communications and power supply. Hecker's tales of the South Pole Station read like a thrilling sci-fi novel. Within the station's clean air sector lies the Atmospheric Research Observatory, an extraordinary observatory with an intriguing secret. He claimed to witness a mesmerizing green laser illuminating the Antarctic night. Its purpose remained a mystery, speculated to be a long-distance communication device or even a shield against unknown forces. And that's not all. He suggested that the station's energy supply exceeded public knowledge, hinting at a hidden nuclear power plant or an enigmatic top-secret energy source. But the intrigue deepens. Hecker revealed the existence of a concealed space program operating at the South Pole Station. Ice Cube, the seemingly ordinary neutrino detector, was believed to possess extraordinary capabilities. A laser gun, a UFO traffic controller, and a conduit for faster-than-light communication. Yet he voiced concerns about potential earthquakes caused by Ice Cube and suspected the presence of a mysterious elf system, its purpose shrouded in secrecy. Harp. From conspiracy theories to Earth's electromagnetic playground. In the fascinating world of conspiracy theories, there's a curious notion called harp, not a musical instrument, but something quite mysterious. You see, some people believe that the Japan earthquake and tsunami in March 2011, which tragically claimed over 18,000 lives, were somehow linked to this HARP thing. But what's HARP, you ask? Well, it's not a secret government agency, it's said to be a high-tech project. HARP supposedly messes with the very Earth itself. It's like a sci-fi plot. This project uses super-powerful electromagnetic waves to tinker with our planet. And when it does, it can supposedly trigger these massive earthquakes. Now, Japan wasn't the only place where folks think HARP was at play. There's the Chile earthquake and tsunami from February 2010, too. Some stories say it caused over 500 deaths. But hold on, there's more. A huge landslide in the Philippines back in 2006, which tragically took the lives of more than a thousand people, also gets linked to HARP. What's truly mind-boggling is that this isn't just some internet chatter. Even world leaders have jumped on the conspiracy bandwagon. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who was Iran's president at the time, claimed that HARP was behind floods in Pakistan. He even said European nations were stealing rain clouds before they could reach Iran, causing water shortages. 
Not to be outdone, Hugo Chavez, the then president of Venezuela, went on to say that the U.S. was testing a tectonic weapon, and that's what caused the devastating Haiti earthquake. He thought it was just practice before they aimed it at Iran. But here's the real head-scratcher. Nobody really explains how a few antennas in the U.S. could supposedly make quakes thousands of kilometers away. According to conspiracy theorists, the American government is hiding all the interesting details and creating a web of secrecy. It's like a puzzle within a secret, all tied together with a lot of excitement. Here's the fascinating part. HARP sends strong radio waves high up into the ionosphere, which is a layer more than 60 kilometers above us. These waves heat up the electrons in the ionosphere like a giant science experiment making the sky sizzle. But why? Well, scientists want to see what happens next. When the electrons get excited, they create disturbances called perturbations, and scientists want to study them to improve our communication and navigation systems. Just imagine having perfect cell phone signals and flawless GPS. That's the kind of magic HARP is working on. Now, the history of HARP is just as interesting as its experiments. It started under the U.S. Air Force and Navy from 1990 to 2014, but in 2015, they gave control to the University of Alaska Fairbanks. But here's the exciting part, the conspiracy theories. HARP has been accused of controlling earthquakes and manipulating the weather. However, HARP scientists have said that its radio waves can't affect the weather we experience down here on Earth's surface. Weather happens in lower layers called the troposphere and stratosphere, far below where HARP's radio waves go. So if the sun's solar storms can't change our weather, then HARP definitely can't either. But here's a twist. While HARP might not be causing earthquakes or controlling the weather, it doesn't mean those things are completely impossible. After all, the world is full of mysteries. However, humans can actually make earthquakes happen, and it's pretty fascinating. There are a couple of ways we can do this. First, there's something called fracking, which is a method used to get oil and natural gas from deep underground. When we do this, we produce a lot of wastewater that we pump into deep wells. Sometimes this can cause the ground to shake a bit, like a mini earthquake. The second way is by using nuclear explosions, but don't worry, these aren't the huge, destructive kind you might be thinking of. These earthquakes are much smaller and usually happen near the explosion site. So not all nuclear blasts make quakes, but some do, and they only affect areas a few tens of kilometers around them. Now, here's where things get really interesting. There's a story about the famous inventor Nikola Tesla. He supposedly built a machine that could make vibrations, kind of like shaking the ground. Imagine a machine that could make a building shake. People in New York thought it was an earthquake when they felt it. Tesla wanted to use this machine to send electricity through the ground, which was a pretty wild idea. He even believed that if he made the machine strong enough, it could create real earthquakes. But sadly, this idea never got past the prototype stage. But wait, there's more. Some people believe there's a super secret earthquake machine called HARP, and they're a bit obsessed with it. But guess what? There are other projects like HARP around the world, like one in Puerto Rico, one in Ukraine, and even one in Norway. The massive earthquake in Turkey. Recently, some wild stories have resurfaced on social media about HARP. People are wrongly pointing fingers at it, saying it caused the big earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. They're also talking nonsense about it making crazy weather and spreading the virus. For a while now, scientists have been setting the record straight. This place called HARP is not some secret weapon lab. It's just a research thing in Alaska with lots of tall antennas. Those terrible earthquakes happened on February 6th, causing a lot of sadness. But now some folks are cooking up a fresh version of the same old story. They say they saw bright lights right before the ground shook. They think HARP made those lights to punish Turkey because they didn't want more friends in NATO. This is just silly, like saying Bugs Bunny dug the quake holes looking for carrots. A smart person named David Keith, who knows about science, says HARP can't make earthquakes. It just talks to electrons way up in the sky to see how they affect phones and stuff. But HARP's talk isn't loud enough to reach Turkey. Earthquakes happen because the ground moves, not because of fancy radio waves. Sometimes, when the Earth shakes, lights flash. It's normal, like when your lights flicker at home. 
Experts say it's often from power lines or big power boxes wobbling during the quake. There are lots of stories about where these lights come from, but no one really knows for sure. A clever professor named Michael Lockwood says maybe the story about HARP being a secret weapon started because it used to chat with submarines using radio waves. But after the Cold War, they didn't need to do that anymore. So, some folks turned that into a funny idea about mind control and earthquake machines. People can believe some pretty strange things sometimes. A long dormant underwater volcano near Antarctica triggers a swarm of 85,000 earthquakes. In 2020, something extraordinary happened beneath the Earth's surface near Antarctica. It was like the Earth itself was stirring from its slumber. This remarkable event, known as a seismic swarm, unleashed the strongest series of earthquakes ever recorded in that part of the world. Imagine the ground beneath you shaking and trembling for several months. What caused this geological spectacle? Well, deep beneath the Earth's surface, there's a super-hot substance called magma. It's so hot that it's like a fiery finger poking into the Earth's crust. This fiery finger of magma is what likely triggered these earthquakes, according to some really clever researchers. Now here's the cool part. While similar things have happened in other places on our planet, this was the first time anyone had actually seen it happening here. Usually, these kinds of processes take millions of years, way longer than a human lifetime. So the scientists were incredibly lucky to witness it. All of this commotion took place near an underwater mountain called the Orca Seamount. It's basically a sleeping volcano that rises nearly 3,000 feet from the ocean floor. This area is pretty wild geologically, with one piece of Earth's outer shell, called the Phoenix Tectonic Plate, diving beneath another one, the Continental Antarctic Plate. This collision creates all sorts of cracks and rifts in the Earth's crust. The first people to notice something was up were scientists on an island nearby called King George Island. They felt these small earthquakes, like nature's little reminders that the Earth is alive. Word about these rumblings quickly spread to researchers around the world who were working on various projects with their island colleagues. But there was a problem. King George Island is pretty remote, and there were only two earthquake detecting stations nearby. So the clever researchers had to get creative. They used data from these local stations, along with information from ground stations for a global satellite navigation system, to figure out how much the ground was moving. They even tapped into data from more distant earthquake detecting stations and satellites that use radar to track ground movements from space. The result? They put together a puzzle of data that told the amazing story of what was happening deep below the Earth's surface. This discovery was like a front row seat to one of the Earth's most dramatic performances, and it's helping us understand our planet in ways we never could before. Nature's secrets are being revealed, one earthquake at a time. Think of the earthquake investigation like detectives solving a mysterious puzzle. They had a bunch of special tools, some basic and some fancy. The basic tools, which they placed close to where the earthquakes happened, were like tiny detectives who could spot even the tiniest shakes in the ground. But they also had these high-tech tools placed farther away. These gadgets were like super detectives with cool gadgets and a knack for finding out everything about the big, serious quakes. By putting together all the information from both the basic and high-tech detectives, the team made a sort of map that showed what was going on deep underground that caused these really big earthquakes. It's like they connected the dots to reveal the secrets of the Earth. The two biggest earthquakes were like the main actors in this drama, shaking the ground a lot. But after the second big one, things got quieter. The Earth's surface had actually moved quite a bit, like shifting a rug under a table, but only a small part of it could be explained by these big earthquakes. So the scientists suspected something else was at play. Their theory was that these big quakes somehow opened up cracks in the Earth's crust and let the molten rock called magma sneak in. It's a bit like a superhero story where the hero breaks through a wall to save the day. In this case, the magma was the hero. The scientists even thought there might have been an underwater volcano eruption around that time. But to be sure, they would need to go on an adventure to the ocean and measure how deep the seafloor was. They'd compare it to old maps to see if the volcano had blown its top, 
just like how explorers look at old maps to find hidden treasures. So, there's still a bit of mystery left in this earthquake island tale? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.